I'm telling you now, those remedies like like Fosac, when people have never been well since the flu, it can be life changing for people. It can be life changing for people. Like all same with gel semium. The other remedy I didn't mention, if things are lingering on, I may have mentioned this when we did coughs or colds. If things are lingering on, never forget the remedy sulfur. Just to complete, just to complete it. If you, this, this might be some little symptoms are hanging around, a couple of doses of sulfur, like 30C, that will often knock you on the head. So one of the symptoms of influenza, many, many people have had it, flu, I'm sure you've had it at some time in your life. And the, with flu, the symptoms can come on very quickly or can come on slowly and often can include sudden, like a sudden high fever, high temperature, an aching body. I know when I get flu, it's like I start to ache in my muscles and my joints, feeling tired, feeling exhausted. But sometimes you can have a dry cough, a sore throat, headache, difficulty sleeping, like you can't quite get, get in a good position. Um, loss of appetite, when you just lose all your appetite. You can get often diarrhea or, or tummy pains, feeling sick as well, or, and being sick, you know, vomiting as well. So you can have like a gastric flu as well. So, and the symptoms will often be the same for children, but often children will also complain of earaches. It's quite a common thing with the kids, or tummy aches as well. Um, and they won't be as active. They'll be, be a bit more lethargic. The kids just won't see, seem to be like they normally are, sort of running around. They'll want, they'll want to be quiet. So please check us out on YouTube, or if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. So then you know when these new exciting videos are being released on these different issues that we're talking about. And check us out on our website as well. So let's look at the remedies, the remedies for influenza. So the first remedy, this has appeared a lot in a lot of these videos and lives we've doing, is aconite. So often the first sign of any influenza, um, routinely, any sort of any cold, any sort of any sulfur, we've talked about this in previous videos, check them out if you haven't already checked them out. Aconite, that first sign of influenza, feeling achy, not feeling quite right, like the sudden, it comes on suddenly. So it can be ailments from dry, cold winds, very, very common cause for people getting to an aconite state or getting very cold, chilled. But also, as I mentioned, mentally, emotionally, from a shock or from a fright, they can start developing these influenza or flu-like symptoms. So they can get, often get a dry, burning skin, high fever with coldness, with chills and shivering. The fever and chill can alternate. OK, so one minute the fever, then the chilly, then the hot. They can get a red, hot, flushed face. One cheek red, the other is pale. Another keynote there for aconite. Also keynote for chamomilla, the remedy chamomilla as well. Well, there's a great restlessness with aconite, tossing about, sort of like moving around, say they're in bed, and a lot of anxiety and sense of foreboding. They think they're going, they're going to die. Uh, that's a big thing with aconite. It's the anxiety. It's the restlessness. And sometimes their pupils can be contracted as well. Worse in the evening, worse around uh, at midnight, Worse for touch. So if you touch them, it's oh, I'm not getting off. I'm too sore. Leave me alone. Worse for any motion. So they want to just be sort of lying down. And worse for any cold. You know, you open the door. Oh, close the door. It's too cold. Better for resting. Okay. They want to rest. But also they want open air. So they might want the window open. Uh, and wants to uncover during the fever. If there's a lot of feet, the heat, they want to take the covers off. But then that can alternate with the chilliness. Okay. Very thirsty during the fever stage, very thirsty for the fever and the chill stage that you want to drink. So again, look at the keynotes. I talk about this a lot. I want to keep on repeating it. This is what gets you into the remedies, is these keynotes. Okay, let's go to the next remedy. So remember, aconite, for the first stages that feel like you're coming down with something, always give aconite. And again, you can give it every half an hour, every hour. And because remember, it's a, it's a, it's a sudden onset. And this, if you get it in quick enough, Often this can stop it going into anything else. The other remedy, which I've mentioned in other videos, and I've talked about colds, is ferrum foss, the tissue salt ferrum foss. Check out the cold video uh, on YouTube, and it will talk about ferrum foss there. Okay, so the next remedy, arsenicum album. So look at this picture. Often with arsenicum, there's a lot of anxiety with arsenicum. So this is influenza, often with gastroenteritis. So this is where 
it's like a gastric flu. There's vomiting, there can be diarrhea. But the keynote for arsenicum is always what? Burning. They have burning pains. They can go to the bathroom, to the toilet, have a diarrhea, and it's burning. It burns the anus. So burning is a big theme through this remedy. They can have an intermittent fever that stops and starts. Always the fever's worse at night, okay, around midnight. We'll talk about that. And you can feel like there's hot water in their veins. The, that, the heat feel like hot water in their veins, burning. Remember that burning, um, that burning sensation. Internal chills with external heat and red cheeks. So they can feel cold inside, but the cheeks are red and they can feel hot. Or internal heat, but they feel cold. Okay, so they can have a feel, but actually they feel cold. So it can be one or the other. Chills and rigors. What are rigors? Well, if you've ever had a rigor, it's when you, you're, like, you're shaking uncontrollably and they can feel so, so cold that their blood feels like ice. So this real polarity between feeling like that, the rigors, where they're so cold inside and they feel so chilled, it feels like they've got ice in the bones and they can't stop shaking uncontrollably. That's often with a rigor. And you see this in fevers and chills. Or they can feel the opposite. They can feel like they've got burning, burning in their veins. Uh, exhaustion, great weakness, big keynotes of arsenicum, the slightest exertion. They don't even probably realize until they try to get out maybe out of bed or up from a chair. And they feel like so e exhausted. It's great, great weakness with arsenicum. Sometimes they can have a dry cough as well as, as coming down with it, uh, with wheezing and breathlessness. Worse going into the cold air. OK, they're going to, from warming to cold. It can bring on the, the cough uh, and, and the wheezing. And they can have a burning sensation, again, in their chest or feel like the chest is a oppression of the chest if they have a cough with it, with this flu. As I mentioned, great anxiety, anxiety around their health, despairing with arsenic. And they don't feel they're going to recover, fear they'll never recover if once they've got the flu. They just don't feel they're ever going to get better. And you often will hear anxious moaning with arsenic. Oh, oh. You can hear them in the other room. It's like this anxious moaning, but like I said, this despair of recovery, which is a big keynote. Better for heat, better for company. So they want you around, even though they'll probably still be anxious. They want, they want company around. Uh, better for open air, better for sweating. So they'll feel better once they sweat. So if their fever breaks and they sweat, they feel better for it. And I said, better for warmth. But the arsenic are worse for wet weather, for cold, for damp, cold air makes them a, a lot worse and they're aggravated by that and also around or after midnight between 11 p.m and 2 a.m these again keynotes you'll see these keynotes go through every different conditions that we've talked about you'll find these same keynotes this is what gets you into the remedy you'll recognize it the burning the anxiety despair of recovery the exhaustion um the anxiety as, as we talked about um, and the thing with arsenic, and they're very, very chilly, okay? So they're really cold, so they want warmth. But often they have this really great thirst, and they won't gulp it down. They'll take small sips, okay? Small sips at a time, but often very thirsty. So a great remedy, especially when there's vomiting and diarrhea involved in gastric, uh, like a gastric flu or gastroenteritis, think of arsenic album. Next remedy, bryonia. So bryonia, often with their influenza, it's quite a slow onset. So it takes a few days to come, and you'll get aches and pains in every muscle and joint. So the pain is in the muscle and the joint. And again, very, very chilly. In fact, chilliness, uh, it predominates this, this remedy. Okay, they're very, very cold. And they just want to lie still, and they only feel better if they are still. They don't want to move. OK, they don't want to move. Very irritable. They want to be left alone. Want to be left alone. Leave them alone. They're like a bear with a sore head. They want to just be very quiet and alone and very irritable. Even if you try to do things for them, it's like you're doing it wrong. They'll be very snappy with you. And often as they go on, when this flu goes on for a while, again, they'll also despair of recovery as well. But it doesn't have the restlessness like arsenicum. Okay, these people want to be still. Often can have a dry, hacking cough as well. Very painful. Look at the picture. This is the keynote of bryonia. They cough, but before they cough, they have to hold the chest to keep it still because it's so painful when they cough. 
to stop the pain, they will hold themselves very, and they don't want to cough because they know of the pain. Often get headaches as well. When we did headaches in the headaches video that we did, Brian was a big remedy here for headaches. Bursting, splitting frontal headaches, worse on any movement, even to move the eyes. Even to move the eyes is painful. Same with influenza, even to move their eyes, even their eyes are sore. Okay, so the worst for that. And can have a pain over the left eye that goes back to the back of the head. Pain that goes back to the back of the head. Uh, dryness of all parts. Again, very, very dry with Brony. It's like they're dehydrated. Their mouth is dry. Their throat's dry. Their lips are all dry. And they're thirsty for large quantities of water. We talked about arsenic and small sips. Bryonia, they are gulping it down. They just cannot get enough water in. Cannot get enough water into them. Better, better for hard pressure. They feel better for hard pressure, better for if they've got a painful part like the head, lie, better for pressure or lying on the painful part. Um, better for cold air. So again, they like the, the window open. Better for rest, better for being for quiet. Now, even though they're very, very chilly, they like that movement of air, that cold air, like I said, in the room, or they'll be all covered up. Um, worse, 9 p.m. Also worse, 3 to 4 a.m. And these time modalities are very specific, but you'll see this with remedies can be that specific. So this what if you get somebody who wakes up in the middle of the night around 3 or 4 and they're, they're not well, then you look at bryonia. Same with at 9 p.m. So these time modalities will get you into the remedies. Remember, I, um, aconite and also arsenicum is around midnight. Okay, or sorry, aconite is after midnight. Arsenicum is around midnight. Uh, worse, becoming hot. Okay, worse from a warm room. So they need that cold air sort of circulating so they can breathe. But all their symptoms of bryonia, all their symptoms are worse for motion. Okay, they are worse for motion. So there, I've told you a lot of keynotes there, and I've highlighted them as well in black as well. And remember, you can get a copy of these slides as well for, for your own use. So the next remedy, Eupatorium, better known as nip bone or bone set. This is a big, big, big influenza remedy. And often here, you'll, you'll find the chill is preceded by thirst, and they have extreme aching deep in the bones. This is the keynote for this remedy, okay? aching deep in the bones. The, phones, the bones feel like they're going to break. And particularly the wrists, the bones around the wrists feel really achy. The, the wrist joints feel really achy. It's a deep ache in the bones. And the complaints can begin in the back. So they're like the lower back. It can start aching there. And then it can get worse and it can feel like the back's going to break. And people will say this. feels like my back is going to break. It's that aching and deep in the bones or in the joints. Very restless. The bed feels really hard. They can't get comfortable and they're moving around. And they feel like they've got a bruise sensation over the whole body. It feels sore inside. And this is more in the flesh. It feels sore. Well, the aching is more in the bones. Remember, Arnica has that. Bruise feeling all over. Also, look at Arnica. Severe headaches with pain at the back of the head, especially after lying down. To get the pain. And um, again, with soreness of the eyeballs, we just talked about bryonia there. Also, Eupatorium has that soreness of the eyeballs, even the eyeballs feel sore. So, this is influenza with a high fever. They can have a high fever with the bone aches and the fever and chill alternate. Okay, again, one in the hot, then they get chilly, then the hot, they get chilly. And they can have hoarseness as well with a loose cough, with soreness of the chest. And again, the better for holding the chest. So again, you're thinking of bryonia here. So they want to hold the chest and they feel better for getting, if they're going to cough, get on the hands and knees and cough. Again, a strange, rare, peculiar symptom, but they will get on their hands and knees in order to cough or they'll hold their chest like bryonia. Okay, they can have also have a watery nasal discharge with sneezing, but again, very chilly. And they want to be, they want to be covered up. They really want to be covered up and better if they're indoors. Prostration with eupatorium. Tired, really tired, exhausted, but they can't get comfortable in bed because of the deep aching. So the soreness and the achiness. So they're just absolutely exhausted because they just can't seem to rest, even though they want to rest. Worse for cold air. Now this type of modality is worse seven to 9 a.m. So they're worse in the morning, okay? Worse in the morning. 
worse from coughing, worse moving around, better for sweating. So if they sweat, they feel so much better. I know that when I ever get flu, influenza, I want to sweat because I know once I sweat, I will feel a lot better. But the headache, if you have a headache, that's not better. The back of the head, that's not better for sweating. And also for, the better for being warmly covered during the chill. And they have a big thirst for cold drinks. Again, you think in Bryonia. But also they got a great craving for ice cream. And there's another remedy here, phosphorus, you're thinking. So you can see that there's quite a few remedies in Eupatorium where you may give Bryonia, but actually what you need to give them is Eupatorium. So this is a really, really good remedy. Um, it's, a, it's a great remedy to use and often forgotten in, in influenza. The next remedy, the number one flu remedy people normally go to is gelsemium. So this is with a flu influenza or flu of gelsemium. It's a gradual onset, a bit like bryonia, gradual onset, but they have a sensation of heaviness throughout the body. Heaviness is a keynote of gelsemium. Everything feels heavy. The legs feel heavy. The arms feel heavy. Even the eyelids feel heavy. And you'll see that the eyelids are droopy, like the picture here, really heavy and droopy. That is a keynote for gelsemium. Great fatigue, great aching and weakness and soreness in the muscles. So this is they have aching and weakness and soreness in the muscles. And also the muscles can tremble. They feel like they've got trembling in the muscles. And you can get into a gelsemium state, often after a cold, damp weather, or mental and emotionally from anticipation. So they're about to go and do a, a, a speech or a talk or a presentation at work, and they can go into this state. So, so gelsemium, you can get into the state from anticipation. Or you may have to go to a, a dentist appointment and go into this state. Or from bad news. This is one of our number one remedies for bad news. You get bad news and then they go into this weak state. So they have, when they have a fever, they have chills up and down the spine. But as you can see from this picture, there's extreme exhaustion with no energy. And even when you're speaking to them, oh, well, how are you? Do you want anything to drink? Or they'll answer very slowly. It's like even to speak is an effort. Even to speak is an effort. And they feel dizzy, but there's this drowsiness. But if they get up, may want to go to the toilet, they'll be really dizzy with it as well. But very drowsy, very dozy, a lot of exhaustion and no energy. But also they can have dull headaches, like a band sensation around the forehead or over their eyes. And it goes to the back of the head. OK, so that's a big keynote, again, of gelsemium, sensation like a band across the forehead above their eyes. They're better for sweating and they're better for urination. So if they urinate, that they feel better. Again, a keynote of gelsemium. Often the headaches can be be feel better after urination. They can be better in open air as long as it's not cold, chilled air. That can be better for. It can be better in the afternoon. So around 3 around 3 p.m., 3 or 4 p.m. And reclining, but the head has to be high. They need the he head up. Again, like the picture. They're worse for cold, damp weather, as we've talked about. Worse for anticipation, as we've talked about. But even for pleasurable events. So, so they, there's going to be a birthday party or something they really want to do. It's that anticipation that can cause them to go into this gelsemium state. Worse change of the weather cold night, warm days. So you'll get this in the autumn time. And again, worse from bad news. And the thing with gelsemium is they are thirstless. They don't want to drink. They're not thirsty. Again, different than some of the other remedies. Next remedy, Nux Vomica. So often this is very specific with Nux Vomica. You get this with colds as well. If exposed to a cold east or northeast wind, can put people into a Nux Vomica influenza state. Very chilly, very shivery, must be covered up. And then you get high fever with a sudden onset, it comes quickly. The body is burning hot, especially the face, but they can't move or uncover without feeling chilly. Okay, so they may get really hot and burning, but they can't move or uncover without feeling chilly. So they're really, really chilly, Nux Vomica. And again, they can have really intense rigors, and you know, that trembling, that shaking uncontrollably, and the feeling so, so cold. 
aching in the limbs and back, often with gastric symptoms, because Nux vomica, as we know, is a big gastric affinity. They can have nausea, they can have sickness, they can have vomiting, they can have loose stools, they can have acid rising, burning, like, um, yeah, like acid reflux. But they often will have chill with thirst, okay? So when they're chilly, they, they, they want to drink, they're thirsty. If they've got heat, then they don't have a thirst. So you might see in the fever, they don't want to drink. When they're chilly, they do. Again, interesting keynote there. They can have sour sweat, and sometimes it smells like uh, like musty straw. That's often how people describe the Nux vomica perspiration. Because again, we can have all different types of perspirations and smells and all different things. Sometimes it's rancid, some, all different types. But with, with uh, Nux vomica, it smells like old musty straw. Very hypersensitive, very irritable, a bit like bryonia. But well, there's more, like I said, there's more energy with, with Nux vomic. And you can see with this face, they're all, they're all covered up, but they're like, oh, they're, you know, you, you, again, they, you, they're very irritable and very, they'll fly off the handle very quickly. But also very much a hypochondriac. You know, they think, oh my God, I've got some really bad disease. Th this flu is, is, is proper flu, they'll say, or it's the worst flu that, you know, that anybody's had. They're very much a hypochondriac as well uh, with Nux vomica and very worried when they're ill. And often this can be a business person remedy. So being ill, they don't want to be ill. They want to push past being ill. It's like illness is for weak, is is for um, weaklings. You know, you've got to be strong. But that's very much with Nux vomica. So if this work is very much what they do, what their identity is about. So if anything stopping from working, then it's like that. That's the worst thing that can happen because they'll be still thinking about work. Okay, the mind will still be going. And um, worse cold drafts. So do not open a door or window with, with, with them. Noise, lights, touch, worse in the morning, worse from cold, dry weather. Better for free discharges, okay? They feel better if they can discharge in some way, be it a cold or going to the toilet. Better for rest, better for hot drinks, and better for warmth. So again, remember the chilliness of Nux vomica. Really good picture there of Nux vomica. Okay, rust talk. So... Ailments from damp, cold weather, change of the weather, getting wet or chilled, or from cold bathing, okay, or from cold bathing. So I know there's a big craze uh, at the moment or a big movement around bathing in cold water, uh, very cold water, in fact. So uh, sometimes you get people will react to that, you know, that, that it's always about our susceptibility. So with Rustox, they're very restless, physically very restless, worse in the evening, worse in bed. And they can get pain and stiffness in the lower back or the sacrum. Okay. Now remember, we use Rustox for for injuries, for sports injuries. Um, we we cover this in strains and sprains when we did that as a topic. So the stiffness and soreness, aching in the limbs, but they're worse from being still. Better moving about. So so often Rustox is called the rusty gate remedy. The worse first motion. First moving, but better continued moving. Okay, so the better if they move around. Better for stretching, so there's discomfort when they're trying to rest, especially if they don't feel well and they feel like they've got flu, but better moving around. And they, I'm sorry, better for stretching as well as moving around, changing position. They have high fever, but very cold with the shivering if they're uncovered, a bit like Nux vomica. Okay, the worst for being uncovered. And it feels like cold water is being poured all over them. That's how they describe it. Or again, cold water is running through the veins. They can get anxious, restlessness, sad, worse in the evening. They don't like being ill. Okay, they do not like being ill. But again, they can have this strange keynote where if you stick the tongue out, they can have like a little red triangle at the end of the tongue. Okay, if they stick it out. So stiffness, soreness, restlessness. These are the main keynotes that will get you into Rustox. Better for heat, always better for heat, better for hot bathing, if it's a shower or a bath, better for warm drinks, better for swallowing, better for motion, better for being wrapped up, okay? Worse on waking, worse better as the day goes on, worse cold dampness in the evening. Desires cold milk, yogurt or cheese, cold drinks, and can be aggravated by cold drinks. Okay, so th this is the last remedy that I wanted to, to talk about is post-viral. 
So often people have never been well since having influenza or the flu. They've never got over it. They've just never got, never, their energy hasn't come back. And this can be a month. It can be two months. It can be six. It can be a year. It can be many years. People have never been well since this bout of influenza that they have. And there's two big remedies I would mention here. One would be gelsemium, or go back and look at the symptoms of the flu that they had, if they can remember, you know, a couple of months previously, because they may still need that remedy. But, but gelsemium is a good post-viral remedy. And FOSAC, phosphoric acid, is the remedy what I want to share with you today, which is great for post-viral. So this is really good for post-viral fatigue. This is weakness and debility. So with FOSAC, look at this picture. It's like they feel weak, they're apathetic, and they're just debilitated mentally, emotionally, as well as physically. So they're apathetic and indifferent to everything. And if you look at them, it's like their eyes, the lights are on, but nobody's home. That's this remedy, FOSAC. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Sleepy by day, feel really wiped out, can't collect the thoughts or find the right word when you're talking to them. Even thinking makes them feel dizzy. It's like somebody's unplugged them. And they can even have a weak, weak feeling in the chest from talking. They just feel weak, weakness. If this is often from people who've had loss of vital fluids, which means in homeopathy, if they've sweated, they may have sweated a lot during the, the influenza, and now there's an imbalance within the system. They're weak from that. The worst for emotions, worst being talked to. If you're trying to talk to them, it's like it can be just very blank as though they're just facing a wall. And again, find it very hard to talk or articulate. Uh, worse for cold drafts, worse emotions, worse being cold anyway. Better for short sleeps. These are better for, for cat naps. They feel rejuvenated from that. Really helps their energy if they have a cat nap. And that's the phosphorus part of the FOSAC. They crave carbonated drinks, so they'll crave Coca-Cola, fizzy drinks, anything fizzy, juicy things. And if you look at a can of Coca-Cola, for example, if you look at in the ingredients, it says phosac, phosphoric acid is in there. So they're craving what they need. And often they'll have dark rings under the eyes. Dark rings was often a sign of adrenal or kidney weakness in Chinese medicine. Um, but this is a great remedy for people for never been well since influenza, alongside things like gelsemium or alongside any of those rooms I've talked about if, you, if they're still in that state, okay? If they're still in that state. So as I always say, it's all about prescribing. You can use the 6C, 30C. This is what you'll get in most remedy kits as a home prescriber or over the counter uh, or from local health food stores or homeopathic pharmacies. And again, you can take one dose every hour for three or four doses. Now, you're watching how the body responds, how the person responds to the remedy. You may give them the remedy and the, they, they start to really sweat. They can fall asleep. There's different ways, but you've just got to follow what we call the vital force. How do, the, the remedies, remember, are like keys to a lock. They're stimulating the body to heal itself. That's what we're doing with the remedies. We're trying to get the body to heal itself. And what those remedies do is just turn the key in the lock. So you're looking at how... The, uh, how the body's responding to the remedy. You know, how's the body responding to it? And what I would say, just as a broad uh, a broad sort of um, rule of thumb, one dose every hour for three or four doses or until the symptoms get better. And remember, when you're designing, looking for a remedy, you're looking from the three-legged stool. You're looking for those three main keynotes from that remedy in order to prescribe. And you'll know whether it's working or not. You'll know by following the, the person how they've reacted to taking that remedy. Do they feel better? Now, they're not going to feel better maybe in a minute, but you, you might have to give it half an hour and just see how they are. Just see how they are. And if symptoms persist, then always seek help of a qualified practitioner. So check us out. As I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's lots of videos in there. And then you'll get notified when new videos get released. And also check us out on the website, uh, www.chehomeopathy.com. We have lots of goodies on the website. So check us out. Listen, lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for joining me live. And thank you for you guys watching the videos as well. So I'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.